Welcome to GRIT, the Real Estate Growth Mindset Podcast, hosted by Brian Charlesworth, founder of Sisu. Sisu provides growth automation software for real estate. You'll hear stories from real estate thought and technology leaders, team owners, and brokers on how they grew their business in a rapidly changing industry. You'll learn how to transform your brokerage and teams into a high-performing and analytics-driven business so you have a new, durable, competitive advantage against disruption in your market. So let's get right into it. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Grit Podcast, where we like to dig in with entrepreneurs and business leaders on what makes them successful. I'm Brian Charlesworth. I'm the founder of Sisu, the SaaS real estate growth automation software, and your host of the show. And today we are here with Alvaro Erice. On the, yeah. uh, I don't know if I butchered that, Alvaro. But, <laughs> you that know, was pretty good. That, that's as good as I can do with my Spanish. So uh, anyway, thankful to have you on the show today. How are you doing? Very, very well. Thank you for having me on the show, uh, Brian. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here talking to you and uh, happy to, uh, to get to know some of your podcasters too. Yeah, cool. So um, to, today, let me just give a little bit of your background and I'll let you dive into that deeper. But uh, I mean, you're still super young compared to me. You graduated <laughs> from Stanford in 2011, looks like. So as a Stanford grad, looks like you had a vision to be in the investment world. You went to Bain and Company and then you went to um, Sorrent Capital, where uh, the private equity company that actually acquired sync and that's how you joined sync so anyway give give me a little more background on your background indeed and and, and i'd say a little bit different even though it i actually never wanted to be in the investment world um i've always been an an operator if actually if you think about it my first business when i was um i think 16 year 16 years old i started a comic book importation business from the u.s into argentina so that was oh, the I first business i ran um selling comic books across across argentina and in my retail store and then after that uh i actually after college where i studied civil engineering i went uh to work for a toyota auto parts manufacturer and i installed their first factory in argentina a company called viewtech so from very young i've i've always been an operator uh, i've always loved to um, start and see grow great companies that add value to the world. And that led me to the U.S. in 2008 when the world crashed uh, a little bit. Um, we did pretty well in, in our little corner of the world, not in Argentina, which did horribly as it usually does, but uh, in, in our factory. But it was clear at that moment that I wanted to expand beyond the frontiers of, of what we were doing. And I did come to Stanford then, so I was there in 2009 to, to 11. But out of Stanford, uh, when I joined Bain, I actually joined Bain and Company, not Bain uh, Capital. So, so that's the consulting arm of it, yeah, which right. was pretty cool because it allowed me to uh, advise and explore a lot of different companies on a very um, tactical way, helping them grow. But of course, these were big companies. Yes, this is uh, the, the pizza right. hats of the world and stuff. Um, and so when I joined Serent, it was actually not, although I like the investment side of things, I like to look at companies and see whether I believe that they are true value. Um, the truth is I, I, I came to, into Serent as an operating partner, as someone that comes to help their companies grow. Um, and of course, we do partake on the investment side because when a private equity company wants to buy a company, it asks the operators whether they think it can grow. But, but my main role was to go in advice, which is specifically how I came into contact with Sync. Okay. So, so Sync is a great company. Obviously, you guys, um, shortly after you joined Sync, I think it was two years later you guys got acquired, mm -hmm. which was what, four years ago now? Is that right? Yeah, more or less. I joined beginning of 2015 and middle of 2016, we were acquired by Fidelity. So, so how did you make that happen? I mean, uh, I would say uh, make Alvaro my operating partner so that we can make that same, that same transaction happen. Right? <laughs> no, I think I, I, I cannot take, uh, take credit for it. I think 
we look sync was was built already in in great values uh, the the sync founder Dwayne Legate uh, started it with a true service model of being there for for a group that was not as cleared that back then as it is now so the the team leader the rainmaker the person that when someone comes from outside of real estate as i came six years ago you think well there's the brokers and there's the agent and you don't really understand that the true most important people of this industry are in between those two things yeah and there are these amazing coaches and team leaders who might be a broker or might not be a broker but they're tactical and they have their people that they guide into this industry and Dwayne did um, discover that, I think, before um, it became such a big trend. And so that's how things started. And when I, came, um, when I came in contact with it, as we were looking at it from Serent, I was amazed at a company that was truly product driven and that had a lot of opportunity. I, hopefully I helped, yes, I joined and we did a couple of things. I think we, of course, had a very good year and a half where we solidified what was a very promising and fast growing company into a very professional and, um, and, and very capable long-term uh, company. And I think that uh, picked the attention of, of Fidelity. Um, if you think about Fidelity, it's a company that depends on the relationship between their title reps and the agents, and they're very much dedicated for the, to the agents. Yeah, and I think they got attracted as from a company that that had a true service model and great product that they could share with agents and and participate a little bit of that great relationship. Great. So let's talk a little bit about more about Sync. So when you got involved with Sync, when how how big was it? So like back how many then, teams. I mean, for those of you who don't know, uh, most of our listeners are team owners, but. For those of you who don't know, I mean, these team owners, these, these guys know how to build businesses. They, they're not like your typical broker who's more around just making sure you're doing things correctly from a documents perspective, but they're really focused on growing businesses, right? So these are some powerful leaders in there, so. Absolutely, I, I tell you, Ryan, I've, I've been around the block, I've advised super big companies and I've started small companies myself and the admiration that I, that I have for our mutual clients and, and friends is, is huge. And I don't just say that. It's a very scary world to run a real estate team. And you can be making a million dollars in profit a year and you can be broke the next year. If you, if you, because you are, I remember a friend of mine told me, well, I'm, I'm unemployed every time I, I sell a home because I need to start searching for my next home that I'm going to, to sell. Um, and it is very true. It's a business uh, that it's, it's not a recurring. It is recurring if you do things right, but, but in its nature, it's not. And, right. and so I, I have huge admiration for these people that, that, that go into it with, with the courage to, to bring other realtors in and, uh, and, and coach them and guide them through what it takes. And so for Sync back then, if I think in 2015, I think we had the team, our team was something like 30 or 40 people um, at the time. And uh, I would say from, from a size, um, we were probably five or six times smaller than, than we are today. Um, where today, I think, uh, again, it's difficult to always um, measure, but today we're over 200 people at Sync. And, and I think it's um, where, I, I guess that we are probably the biggest uh, company serving teams specifically through, a, through an integrated platform. Um, so it, is, it has been quite a ride. And, and yeah, I'm pretty sure that, that 5x or 4x uh, what we were in size back then so i'm not sure i'm not sure how the size you guys are but i think you have over three thousand teams on your platform right for sure yes mm -hmm. yeah and that so. uh, that for me is it. and it, of course it depends on how you see the market of what is a team uh and and so by some by some metrics you could say there's ten thousand teams and by some metrics you could say there's twenty thousand teams 
but but in any but in any scenario um, I do believe that that we have gotten to be the the solution of choice both for the best teams in North America yeah awesome so congratulations on that by the way uh, I know we have a lot of common customers, not nearly as many as I'd like to have. Uh, well, we will have more. Hopefully we can make that change. Yes. Um, so talk to me about, I, I think every entrepreneur has that dream of, I'm going to build this business and I'm gonna take it public or I'm going to sell it. So you got to be on the, well, the private equity side, you weren't really an acquirer, but more an investor and then stepped in as the operating partner. But talk to us about that experience to go through, what was that like going through the Fidelity acquisition? It was harsh, not, not because of Fidelity, but because um, it was actually, so, so what happened back then was um, Serent Capital and I'm, I'm I'm a huge admirer of Serent. I, I'm, I'm, I'm part of them still in, in my soul um, because I like how they invest in, in small businesses and, and really put forward their, the best of themselves to help them grow. But Serent at the time was trying to, um, I think, raise, raise their, their next fund. And even though Sync was a very young investment, if you think about it, a year and a half in the life cycle of a private equity is very, very young. They did think that um, that we were very well positioned to give them the boost if they did an exit with Sync that would allow a very very strong raise of their third fund, and so we actually did a did a prof uh, a process, and and in that process it was it was grueling yeah it running running a company while you're having. 30 or 40 management presentations. And there was, for some reason, uh, there was a lot of demand for, for um, we, we had a lot of people showing up to be interest, interested in sync. And we wanted to cast a relatively wide net. So um, I'd say it was doing management meetings in the afternoon and running the company in the morning. Um, it, it can be rough, but yeah. But it, it got to a good place. Uh, I've seen so many of those processes either fall apart through the process or shortly after the acquisition where the companies are not a great fit. And, and honestly, three years later, I'm, I'm still here and, and happy and running the company, which, which shows that, that it was a very good fit. Yeah, I love that about Fidelity. I've seen that with you guys. I've seen that with Skyslope and I know they've acquired a number of other businesses. I have another friend that actually runs one of their businesses on the, on the uh, mortgage side. And cool. so, Anyway, um, yeah, they've, they've just, that seems to be who they are. So uh, I think it's a great company to, to sell your business to in that aspect. And I guess, Brian, a question to you or, or, or to the, um, your listeners is, depends on what you want as an entrepreneur. Because when one says, well, the dream is an IPO or selling a company, um, but the world doesn't end there and your right. life will continue. And, and it's, it's a little bit of what you think defines yourself and your business. And, and in the case of Sync, we knew that we did not want to get sold or acquired um, by someone who was not customer centric. And, and there's different ways of running businesses. It's not the only way, but, but we wanted very much that approach to be, to be the one. And, and so for us, like I, I suppose, and I wouldn't say names, but if you think against like a big portal that we could, could have been a possible acquirer for us. It's a different kind of relationship where a company that is more selling leads or selling advertising, that's a more transactional relationship, right? Yeah. While um, Fidelity has a very belly to belly, deep relationship between title rep and agent, which is very similar to, to what we do in the sense of, we don't just provide software. We provide a lot of training. We provide almost business coaching sometimes. Yeah. Uh, it, it is a very, very close relationship that we have with our clients. And the biggest win was finding a company that, that resonated with, with that approach. Yeah, and, and I, I'm glad you brought that up because I think that's so important as you, if for those of you who are entrepreneurs out there building businesses, a lot of times we think, hey, <clears throat> I'm going to sell this and then my life is right. <laughs> and, and the fact is, if you're looking to retire, you're not going to have fun. You're not going to enjoy life. So there's not retirement. I've sold businesses where the next day I was out, right? Yes. 
I've sold businesses where I needed to stay in for a couple of years. And, and I think the way you've set that up is, is phenomenal because if you have something you're super passionate about, which I know like me and Sisu, I'm super passionate about taking this to a level where it's just groundbreaking, changing the world of real estate. Yes. And like for me to jump out of that, it's not something I would want to do. So as you're talking to people about that kind of thing, um, know that depending on who acquires that business, you may be starting over building a new career, right? Absolutely. Is that and what or, you want to do? Worse, or worse, you may be stuck there <laughs> in an environment that you hate. Yes, and exactly. I'll tell you, I've, I've seen it from both sides, right? And, and the worst thing anyone wants is someone that is not happy with the place that they're at. And, and for me, I said it when I was in private equity, you want... A, a passionate CEO that is that, that is excited about their company, but about your company too, because now it's one. And if not, you you should be changing your CEO. And and I think from my point of view, I knew that fidelity as any normal acquirer would require me. And my time has gone. I've I'm I've been free for a while, and I'm still very happy here. So so, but for me, I wouldn't spend a single year in a place that I don't like. My life is too short and and i only have one of it so so for me it was very important to find a place where where i would enjoy working that extra year not not no amount of money will will replace that absolutely so congratulations on all of that um moving forward um so what sets you guys apart as a crm i something you just talked about is business coaching and i found that we are doing a lot of business coaching as well uh but talk to us about just what sets you guys apart from, from the rest of the industry? Yes. So I'll tell you a little bit of, of what are my favorite things that when I decided to join Sync made difference to me because I was very, like I was in private equity. I could have stayed there. There was no need for me to jump into, into Sync as Dwayne asked me at the time to do. Um, but it was truly both the team and the product that, that brought me over. And so I would start from the team and the service. Uh, I think the, uh, it is true that Sync is at a high price point, And the reason is that that allows uh, a true white glove service that I think most of this industry cannot provide. Because the, issue, the, the reason that that's important is, unfortunately, what we do, what real estate does is not easy. And if you want to have the best tools, um, we try to simplify them and I love, we'll talk about SISU hopefully in a little bit, but I, I love anything that is easy to use and easy to understand, but that still requires doing online lead generation in general is already a leap for a lot of people. If you're not used to cold calling, that is very different from your referral business that a lot of people start from. And so it's not just enough to have a technology that is very easy to use you also need to bring around it the support system of, okay, what do I do with this? And so for me, the, 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 the huge emphasis on client service, live training, all of those things that we're able to do at Sync that I think most no one can do um, really set us apart. And then from the product point of view, which is my, my, <laughs> it's at my heart because I think everything starts in, and ends in product is I, I think I'll, I'll talk in two parts. So one is on the website itself. I think a lot of these systems, when they were born, they were just born to capture leads. And the websites were just as good as needed to capture that lead. Once they gave you that information, it's yours, it's done, right? Um, and even some of the systems for which you pay big amounts of money to for on a per lead basis, they might be high intent leads, but once the lead comes to you, it's done. Like you have that information and it's a dead lead. It could be a, it could be a very active lead, but you're not gonna get more information on that lead, right? The difference with a CRM that is linked to, to a website is that that lead continues to be alive for a long time. And even leads that you come from someone else, once you have them in your system, if you get them coming back to your website, you're constantly getting information in those leads. You know what they're looking at. You know when they're active. If they want to go dormant for six months, six months later, you'll know when they are suddenly starting to look again. But there's a big but there, which is for all that to be true, your website actually needs to be attractive. And I don't mean nice with a video in the background. I mean 
search, the search experience in your website needs to be superior to Zillow, Redfin, and Realtor.com. If it's not, you'll still get the lead. So there's a lot of other systems out there that have the same IDX search. You go once because you looked at a picture in Google ads that you liked and you click there, you gave your information, you're never coming back, never coming back. What Sync has is if you just go to any of our sites and you just search, my brother is searching for a house. Uh, I think he just found him here in, in Atlanta. And it's such a pleasure to use the website. And, and that, the, what that translates into is a lower cost per lead because people are more willing to put their information in, but more important, uh, a higher return rate. And higher return rate leads into conversion because as they come back to the site, you get more information, you can act in that information and you convert. So that for me is number one from a product point of view. I don't think that any system out there has uh, um, uh, an IDX search website that is superior to Zillow and Redfin where people choose to search on an ongoing basis. Of course, that with our mobile ETA app that, that is a search and a, a native uh, search experience. And, and I think that's the way that people want to search houses for today. And you cannot have just a site that is responsive. You need a native app. And so I'm very proud of that. That's one half of the equation. The other half of the equation, of course, is the CRM. And there, there's a lot of options out there. Um, and, and I understand, and, and there's a lot of shiny objects. Our focus is on results. We are maniacal, maniacally obsessed with conversion. And everything that we do or we put in and out of our system, the question is, will this increase conversion? Will this make money for our clients? If it doesn't, I don't want it. Even if it sounds good, even if a client is asking for it, and if, if, if it's cool right now, because anything that is not good is bad. Because you know it better than anyone as you're deciding what's in your dashboards. <laughs> anything that doesn't need to be there cannot be there, right? And so I think that's where we differentiate ourselves in that everything at Sync has been built towards conversion and, and towards ROI. Um, but I will say one of the things that we are trying to invest in now is into better partner. And that's why I love talking to you right now is better partner with specific technologies that in one area of the world are the absolute best in class and trying to make that um, almost a part of our platform if, if we can. Um, so that's, that's a little bit of, of where we're going to. Great. Uh, we'll dig in. We'll dig into that in just a minute, a little bit further. Um, you guys have grown so fast. It's like there, there is a lot of competition in the real estate CRM IDX space. Uh, so how have you guys grown so fast? Make people money. Okay. That's so we <laughs> focus, focused on those things that are making, I guess, the ultimate client consumer happy, right? Exactly. So, so for me, we are in a service business, right? And the agents make money if they, if they successfully serve customers. And the issue, if you think about technology, if I, stop me if I ramble a little bit, but if you think about technology 10 years ago, most systems were built to serve the, the big brokerages, right? And they were built to, to win an RFP. Oh, I have this feature, I have this feature, I have this feature. So I win it, the broker has it. He can say to his agents when he's recruiting, I have this feature, this feature, this feature. Then no one uses it. No There's one uses 20 it. 20% right? usage, no one cares. Everyone got their win. The company is getting paid, the broker can recruit, and the agent goes like, I'm so busy, who cares, whatever. And, and, and that is the world that still exists today in the background. And we even have had competitors, direct competitors of ours, that went outside of the team world a little bit and into the broker world and, and that is because it is hard to serve the teams. Why? Because I was a little bit in the restaurant industry as a consultant. And when cash flow is king, you cannot hide anywhere. And if your solution is not making money, you're out. And, and for us, it, that's why I measure everything in ROI. Now, the problem in real estate is things take time. I know that a client will have to stay with us for a year and a half or two years to really get the best of our system. Mm -hmm. But I know that if I get them to that point, they're not going anywhere, which also sometimes when we talk about price, people are like, well, you know, there's a solution that has 
80% of what you do or 70% of, 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 your, of what you do and it's half the price. I'm like, yeah, okay. So to someone that is making $20,000 a month on our system, yeah. <laughs> if they lose 20% of that, they're, lost, right. they're losing $4,000 a month. To what, to save $500? It, the, the relationship is once a system like ours or like any system, if you're using it well, once you've gone into it and you've made it part of your business and you're scaling it up, it's making you so much money that cost ceases to be an issue. Cost is an issue in that first year when you're trying to get there and you're making an investment and, and you're waiting for those cycle times of the leads to come through and, and convert. So to your original question, I think what's happened because we are certainly not great at marketing. People know that there are smaller companies than us that are much well known, better known and, and have better videos out there. Um, but we focus absolutely on making them money. And once that happens, that gets you referrals and that gets clients that are sticky for life. If you've been enjoying Grit, please help us continue to grow the channel by leaving a five-star review and sharing it with a friend. Now back to Grit. Great. Okay. I love, I love your focus there. Um, the industry is changing so much every day right now. I mean, if you look, there's been companies trying to put the agents out of business. You're pro agent, we're pro agent, but there are a lot of companies out there that are saying agents don't need to exist. And now I think people have realized they need to exist. And so those companies are now hiring agents. That being said though, like the world is changing with the, the COVID-19 pandemic. I mean, you're in your house today. I'm in my house today. Uh, and where, where do you see this industry going? How are things changing? What do you see happening over the next few years in this industry? So I'll, I'll answer that in two parts. Um, the first one, I think easier about this particular moment is, yes, you're in your house, I'm in my house. My brother's just buying a house. That doesn't change. I did, I did a, a webinar the last week of March when a lot of people thought that the world was ending and we're in a very different world today than we were four weeks ago. Um, and I took, I took what I think was a little bit of a risk and I said, look, I strongly believe that this year we are gonna sell at least 90% of the number of homes that we sold last year. I don't think that the drop is gonna be more than 10%. Why? Because um, supply and demand of real estate is inelastic. If you think about the things that lead someone to buy or sell a home, you're getting married, you're getting divorced, you're having kids, your kids are moving away, or you're changing jobs, right? Those things didn't stop happening for the pandemic. Right. If you were getting divorced, two months of quarantine certainly gets you there. If you're getting married, you're, you didn't stop that. If your kids are going to college, that's still going to happen. And so there was a delay for sure, of a month or a half of, of people waiting a little bit. But I think that the, that the demand is coming up. And, and so I don't think that the COVID pandemic, yeah, it changes the ways that we're gonna live, but that might mean also more like people moving more to the countryside or people that change job situations and have to, uh, to right size their, their home. There's a lot of triggers into actual uh, work that's gonna happen. So on that one, my thought is this year, 20 or 30% of agents may go out of business, but those are all the agents that didn't really count in the first place. Yeah. While, um, while all of the people that know what they're doing are probably going to do at least as much volume as they did last year. And yeah. that is my, my prediction. I totally agree with that. Have you guys seen that the IDX, uh, you guys are getting more web searches yes. with what's going on right now? I've, I've heard that that's actually increased. Is that, has oh. that been the case for you guys? Absolutely. This month, this particular month that just finished May, is the absolute record in Sync's history forever since we started uh, in the lowest cost per lead and the biggest number of leads. We generated 330,000 leads in May, which is we've never before generated more than 300,000. So um, the search and if you, if, you, if you measure lead quality by the ability to get into real conversation, all conversion rates to appointment uh, or at least to quality conversation have gone through the roof because people have been more open to conversations. So, so from an online search point of view, 
it's on fire. It's on fire. We're seeing it. We have people trying to increase their, their, their ad spends, a lot of people doing investments. Um, of course, there was a delay in closings. Closings went down, but now they're coming back up. Um, but, but yeah, I, I'd say I, we, we did a webinar. If, if you look at after in our Sync YouTube channel, it, we did one with my head of Legion, Dan Lott, which I don't know if you met, Ryan, but uh, no, I have not. We went through state by state showing all the trends from, uh, from cost of per lead and uh, hours because we're adjusting to time of day and w day of week. We're doing all the best adjustments to, to maximize return for, for our agents. But I'll tell you, it's, it's better than it's ever been, which uh, is really surprising. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, you did have one uh, separate question on um, on the what is happening with the industry in general, uh, not pandemic related, but where where yeah. is real estate going? I'll give you my thought there. Um, yes, I joined a company that I come from Silicon Valley, where everyone is trying to take the agent out. Uh, or at least was, um, and everyone was like, oh, this shouldn't exist. That's a job that makes no sense. And everyone that doesn't really understand real estate, that's an easy thing to say. Right. And, and, and if you think about it, they gave, in my opinion, the exact opposite example of what they should be thinking. So everyone in Silicon Valley would say, oh, this is like Uber, it's done. Like the agents are not, they're taxi drivers. I'm like, wait, 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 think about it for a second. What? Let me ask you, Brian, what is the most important reason that you use Uber instead of a taxi? Convenience. And what do you mean in convenience? The app? Yeah, well, yeah, just not having to... I, uh, for me, the, the convenience is paying. That's why I use Uber. I can just... My credit card's in there. I'm done. Come get me. But there are taxi cab apps that have it too. Yeah, yeah. But don't you see a total difference in service level once you're in that car? When you oh, take yeah. a taxi now from the airport? Right, right. You take a taxi. It's always a horrible experience, right? <laughs> always. That's a great, that's a great point. In addition to that, um, they never have water bottles for me in a taxi. They do in an Uber, right? Why do you think that the Uber has it and the taxi doesn't? Because the Uber driver actually cares. Exactly. And he's, you think he's making money based on your riding with him where a taxi driver, I, I think they're, they have different motivations. Because an Uber driver is an owner and a taxi cab driver is an employee. Correct. Yeah. So if you think about Uber, the app is what gets them famous. But what the Uber did is to change an industry of employees into an industry of owners. And that makes yes. all the difference in the world. The clean cars, the bottle of waters. Then, of course, you have the review system. But, uh, but when you make an industry of owners, you win. And... If you think about real estate, real estate was born as an industry of owners. The agent is their own boss and they work for a broker, but, but they're not. They, it's their commission, it's their relationships. Uh, it, it is an individual contractor. And so um, that's a great point, uh, Alvaro, because those who tried to put the agent out of business, they are now hiring employees, not business owners, they're hiring employees to be their agents, which you're not getting that same level of service. You're not because they're going against the world. The world is going to trend to a world. And, and as, as of course, I'm a libertarian, which, which uh, influences my way of thinking, but the technology is evolving the world towards individual ownership. And these companies that think that they're using technology to step ahead, they're trying to use technology to step back. And that is just fundamentally wrong. And so for me, this industry, real estate, requires a level of care between the real estate agent and the um, consumer that cannot be provided by an employee. Yeah. You need that person. I was looking for a house, this house that I'm here now, and I'm so glad for my agent that got me that house a few years because I wouldn't want to be in my two bedroom apartment in, in San Francisco right now. Um, he was my agent and when I was buying this house and I found out my mother had pancreatic cancer while I was doing this. And my world came crashing down and I was trying to see if I could bring my mother to the US and doing all of these things. Um, and I was calling him on a Sunday night from a plane flying to Argentina. 
Um, an employee is not going to pick up the phone. Um, an owner will. And an owner that will have a relationship with you for life. I've just given him, my brother, as a referral, and he's closing it. It's hopefully a very good business with this. Um, that's, that's the, uh, it's the best comparison I've heard in the industry. So I, and I haven't heard it before. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah, it's, it's what I believe. I don't think the agent is going anywhere. The transaction is complex. You need a trusted advisor. Uh, it, in my opinion, a lot of things can be replaced, improved. Let me tell you one thing that I do think has improved this industry a lot. Portals like Zillow, Redfin, us have because they moved a task that need, didn't need to be done by the agent. Searching for the house didn't need to be done by the agent. It's much more efficient to be done by me or my wife. We're right. going to look to 300 houses and it allows the agent to spend their time where they need to and it allows an agent to serve many more clients much more efficiently. So improvements well, yeah, I mean, can be done. Yeah, to, to your point, uh, a home buyer can see hundreds of homes virtually and narrow it down to three to five homes that they need to go see instead of having to go see 30 homes now. Well, so, I saw 30 homes. Sorry, JD. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so, but still, I, I, online I saw 3,000. So yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, so anyway, uh, well said, Alvaro. Thank you for, thank you for sharing that. Um, so what's your vision of Sync for the next five years? You mentioned this, you know, partnering with best of class companies. You, you brought up CSU, but I mean, for the next one, two, three, five years, what, what really do you see happening at Sync and what's your vision for the future? So my, my vision for Sync is, is this. I, in some ways we've arrived in the sense that I believe that today we hold the biggest chunk of the best clients in the industry. I would want more, but I don't need that to be three times the clients that I have today. We have the best clients will keep getting more, we'll, some, some will leave the industry. Um, so I'm happy with that. But I do believe that as this industry evolves, less agents are gonna make more business. It, the amateur agent is on its way out. The, my uncle is a realtor, so I'll use them. That doesn't exist today. We'll look at reviews to buy a TV. We won't look reviews to see who helps us uh, hit a, um, get our house. So in my opinion, we need to do more for the agents that we have we need to let them they're going to be making more money because they're going to be gaining more business proportionally with or without us uh, we need to be that horse that they can ride to to get there and i do think that the top 20 percent of agents will be making more like 95 percent of the business in the in the five ten years to come we need to enable them to do that the difference between the philosophy that uh, maybe my, Dwayne Legate, the founder of the company had and, and that, that I have today was he really did believe, and back then it could be true, that the one-stop shop was, uh, was the way to go and that Sync could be the best at everything and we could be that one platform that, that you use for everything. Mm -hmm. And he was coming from a world where people were using 20 pieces of technology and were insanely frustrated by it and had 20 different passwords and a world where integrations didn't really work very well. So that position was true and good at the time. As we've evolved, I think that Sync needs to be the absolute best at certain things. And then it also needs to make sure to have long-term partnerships with the absolute best in very specialized niches. And so for me, if I think core competencies uh, of Sync, the first one is it needs to be the platform where you run your business. So the conversion engine that you're using to run, uh, to, to run all your leads, to get in contact with them, to follow up, the true functions of a CRM is absolutely a core competency. And not less important is the, the search website. Again, a lot of companies out there dismiss it or just concentrate on where it's cute or not. And it has the hero image or this. It has nothing to do with this. This is math. This is, you need to convince people to come and search on your site. Why? Because it makes your CRM more powerful. There's a lot of very good CRMs that because they're not intrinsically uh, linked to a website, they're, they're alarm, an alarm clock. Yeah, a CRM without a website, it's an alarm clock. You right. tell him this is a, a type A lead, you need to tell me three times a week when I need to do this and it tells you. And they could be very good at that. But the information is coming from you. You're feeding the alarm clock at what time do you wanna wake up and the alarm clock wakes you up. The 
integrated CRM to a website, what it does is the alarm clock is operated by the consumer, not by you. The consumer tells you when you want to speak with them. You know what medium they like, you know what times they like, but that is only powerful. So, so that is why you need a CRM link to a, a website. But that is only as powerful as how attractive your website is for people to search. If they're going to use it once and then they're going to go back to Redfin, I'm sorry, but you've lost them. And you're sending, uh, or, or if when they go on, uh, on their phone, because you don't have a native app, they are going to Redfin or to Zillow on the phone, then you are, I, I don't know if you get referrals from Redfin, if they send you a check or something, but you're sending them clients, right? So you need right. to have an awesome website where people want to come and search with a mobile uh, solution that is equally good. So for me, if Sync is the absolute best at those two things, and, and of course, lead gen, so I do believe that we are the absolute best at lead generation and creating you the most cost-effective leads, but a lot of that depends on the website being attractive for people to come in. The other part of it is that we are masters at Google and Facebook. We're very good. We have great partnerships with them. We have a team. Uh, again, if someone goes and sees that video and in our YouTube channel, you'll see physically what I'm telling you, you'll see the people that are behind this science. But those three things, being the best at lead gen, having the best search website, and having a true powerful CRM are the core. And then there are other things where we need to have, we need to be able to partner with the best in the market to be able to provide that at the level that our, client, our clients are the best. And so they expect the best. It's not enough to say, I'm the best at these three things, and then I'll give you this sort of solution on the fourth. And so that's where we look for um, long-term partnerships that, that we're trying to put into effect. Okay, awesome. Um, great. What, uh, what would be the one piece of advice that you would share with most of our listeners are likely, I mean, team owners, uh, possibly broker owners, agents. Uh, what, what would be just one piece of advice that you'd want to share with all of them? It doesn't have to be business advice, but it can be whatever, whatever you want to share. Good question. I don't have an immediate answer. Let me think for a right. second. Well, we can come back to that. That'll, that, that might come to you. So what's your, what's your favorite book? What's the book that's made the biggest impact on your business career? So I don't usually read a lot of business books. Um, I, I, I'm a big history buff. Uh, I love, I love history. And so um, I don't know if uh, I'll, this is a random recommendation, but if, if you ever want to read the best book from, historic novels by Alexand uh, on Alexander the Great, I would recommend Gisbert Hives. Um, okay. And and if you ever, and a different kind of historic novels, um, Bernard Cornwell uh, does a great, well, actually Last Kingdom, have you seen the, the TV series Last Kingdom? I have not, no. So it's, a, it's, a, it's the equivalent of Vikings, but seen from the Saxon side. And, and I, it's a great series, and it's a great series of books from Gis, uh, from. Bernard Cornwell and if you like that TV series and you want a book of his actually go and, and buy his Arthur books called the Warlord Chronicles so for any history nerds out there I've given a, a, a recommendation there. awesome I um, thought I thought with your business background going way way back you might recommend some comic books comic books Oof. well that, that is a whole different podcast yes <laughs> if I had to say one uh, um, Return of the Dark Knight uh, by Frank Miller uh, best Batman comic book ever. It's basically Batman coming back old after the world has succumbed into into some uh, mutations. And uh, I, I actually, this is not a bad moment to, to look at it. Uh, uh, I'd say look it up. Uh, Return of the Dark Knight. Well, wasn't That's the enough. wasn't the Dark Knight also the best Batman movie? I do think yes, uh, probably. Although I'm 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 still uh, the original Batman. I like not not. Adam West has another place, but uh, Batman one I still like uh, with Michael Keaton. But yeah, I do think Dark Knight is, is a great movie. Okay, so uh, you, what what's your favorite place? You're from Argentina. You lived in Silicon Valley. You live in Georgia. What's your favorite place to visit? Hmm, to visit. I like going back to Argentina. Uh, I I'm actually putting together a group for next year with some clients and thinking of going to Iguazu Falls, which is in the north of Argentina. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. Um, I haven't been to Niagara Falls, but I'm sure this gives it a run for its money. And, and, um, and just Buenos Aires is just awesome food, great nightlife, music. Like if you want a cosmopolitan city, it's like 
it's like New York in its space, but but with a very European feeling, and and so I love going there. And then for living, I did live in Amsterdam for a year and a half and fell in love with it. The oh. idea of no cars, only bikes and boats. Uh, it's a very 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 different life. So I might end up there someday. Yeah, nice. So Argentina, obviously, um, that's a place you love. What what took you away from there? Oh, that's another podcast too. Uh, I, it's it's a lot of stuff. Um, I, I think the 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 I'm a libertarian in a country that was strongly socialist, uh, and and I came from a from a very political family, and and I used to uh, to fight a lot. And it, at some point, I had to make the, my decision of whether I wanted to be in politics for life and and do that, or have a successful, hopefully, business career before someday going back and ruining my life by going into politics in Argentina. So that might still happen, but I, but my wife and mother at the time convinced me, um, those are two different people. Uh, <laughs> that, uh, smart mom, smart mom. That so I, I, I hope you go back to Am- Amsterdam after hearing that. I, I, I'd hate for you to end up in that political world. Uh, well, we'll see, we'll see. It's, there's a lot of good that needs to be done too, but Again, for now, I love um, I love where I am at. Uh, I think uh, I love the company. I love uh, the the people that work with me, and um, and I didn't expect to be so happy at 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 a, at a, at a company that has a reasonable size by now. So yeah. so I'm not in a rush to to go anywhere. But someday, Argentina is going to be back in the books. Okay, so this is the last personal question. Just no, uh, what's your favorite York. thing to do, Alvaro? Sorry. What's your favorite thing to do in your spare Oof, time? I'm a gamer. Are you a gamer? I am a gamer. And if you're okay, so what type what's, of games, I'll say all. What, where do you spend your time? What's the current game? So, so I love, so I've, I've been out of video gaming for a while for just time constraints. Uh, I, I used to be a big uh, League of Legends fan there. Um, then I play, I play a lot of board games. Um, and, and so I play the, highly strategic, very complex uh, six hour board games, but I also love 30 minute uh, games. I'll recommend one, King Domino. It's a 30 minute game. You can play with with, with your spouse, with your kids. It's fun. Uh, it's very strategic, but very simple at the same time. I also play war games, if you, if you know what they are, like miniature games, yeah. Um, yeah. strategy games. So, and- um, oh, The game you recommended, that was King Domino? King Domino. Okay, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna go get that and check that out. Very simple game, you'll pick it up immediately. It's one of those games that it's easy to learn, hard to master, uh, it's, a, it's a great game. Okay, so last but not least, uh, how do people get a hold of you? Oh, it's very easy. <laughs> My email is alvarerice at syncpro.com. Uh, it's, it's, or, or if you look me up in Facebook, I'm Alvaro Erice Sync and, uh, and Facebook messenger for me is almost my CRM. So, so both oh. very easy to get a hold of me. Uh, by the way, on business book, um, I recently, um, went through, uh, Joel Peterson's, uh, book, entrepreneurial leadership. Um, what I like about it, I, I'm usually not big into grandiloquent teachings, it's very tactical and it's um, systematic. This is how he sees it and it's like, okay, let's go. How do you build trust? How do you do this? And it's very step-by-step. Step. So I, I recommend it as, as, I think it's a reasonably quick read that um, doesn't get to, um, I don't know the word in English, um, grandiloquent, I guess. It's, it's very factical of like, hey, this is what worked for me and this are the steps in which I did it. Okay, great. Well, thank you for being on the show today. It's been fun getting to know you a lot better. Uh, I mean, we've been looking at doing this work together, but uh, now I've really got to, to know who you are. So I've really enjoyed that. Uh, for those of you who are listeners, don't forget to go out and uh, give us a review. That allows us to bring more high-level people like Alvaro onto the show. So uh, thank you so much for joining today, and we'll see you next week. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for everything. Thank you for joining us on our podcast. If you have an interest in a free seven-day trial of Sisu, go to sisu.co, S-I-S-U dot C-O. Make sure that you use the coupon code GRIT, that's G-R-I-T, to waive all your setup fees and receive a 10% discount on your subscription. 
If you enjoyed listening to this podcast and want to subscribe, search Grit, the Real Estate Growth Mindset on iTunes, Spotify, or Podbean. And with that, we'll catch you next time. Take care.